あ、そうですね。で、あの、あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね。あ、そうですね
All right. We'll come back. Many pets on the table. All right. This week we will cover the subsea plant engineering and ocean engineering. And then next week there will be a revision during the last hours. I have sent you uh, how to exam and sample exam sheets from that year. And over number two is delay due to the incoming exam and proper update. And then I guess after the exam, exam I will be have a um, travel outside of Korea. So. Nice week, we will only have uh, uh, online classes. And I like, color one, one, nine, only. Wait. Oh. And I will cover the next part of subsequent engineering. So, which side is the uh, company name? They have a Pluto product. Oh. Uh, can you close the audio noise? Noise. And Impex, we already covered what is the Impex. Impex is a company name in Japan. There was a Itchis is a field name around uh, Australia. We already covered this. Apache is another uh, product name in Vincent Black Oil. And then field development, what is the components of a field development? And we see more in details. Wood side, Pluto uh, product, we see that. West uh, north corner of North, uh, Australia. This is a Pluto area, tech area. And then there is a trunk line. So they may use a pipeline because it is about um, um, operation 200 kilometers from the peninsula. And then the, there will be an onshore gas plant. There's 2005 discovered. 20 years ago, uh, and water depths, 4 to 1,000 meter. And resource, 4.1 trillion cubic feet gas. Uh, revenue by boost by Australian dollar billion and that creation. So this is a home page for Woodside company. Natural gas, first step, zero. CO2, covering energy company. Considering about uh, CO2, reduction of CO2. 
full side proof of gain the sub CL, sub CL. So you see that the pipeline and then under C, under C, the sub C wells are tied back. And yes, then compensate the export pipeline wells here. Sub C wells tied back to offshore platform by a flow line. This is a, a, a diameter of the flow line. And the oil show LNG gas treatment plants, LNG processing plant here, site B, site A, two places. Uh, on shore energy plant 4.5 uh, million ton per year treatment uh, capacity. Operational for 20 to 30 years, depending on the reservoir site. So I guess they are still working on production. And then here is the gas and condensate to an onshore orange plant by a 35 uh, inch export pipeline, much larger than this 70 pipeline. And there's a right of it. Impact, you already see this one. This is good. Australia, this is more north than Pluto side. And Australia also, this is uh, like uh, it just built here. There are more uh, buildings like this. this one. And we already see this one. The project for uh, Samsung and Daewoo, the Korean heavy industries. There's a CPM, CPM is for Central Processing Facility. Daewoo is for uh, FPSO. This is a picture. It looks like uh, FPSO or Deo, EPF or Samsung. And a little bit more on what is they are doing for CPF. Uh, capacity of a million uh, something export gas. Four leg semi submersible for structure. Four leg semi submersible. Submersible but semi submersible. Okay. Is the idea behind this is the uh, floating OLC. Uh, OLC ponds are mostly covered by underwater uh, submersible, not submersible, underwater uh, uh, body of this part. And the legs is only covering the structural strengths, just connecting a small part of OERC is coming from that. Why? Because the wave, wave uh, disturbance is not of, less affecting the deeply submerged parts of deep portion of OERC. That is the idea behind the service of OERC. So they want to make a large stable uh, superstructure. And morning legs, morning legs means the lines. Morning line. They will take seven groups, four groups, and multiple apply seven uh, lines. And total is 28 morning lines are uh, connected. Four room probably goes to four corner of this part uh, of structure. And inlet flow control and manifold riser. Riser is coming from the uh, deep 1000 uh, meter deep water. Have a top side choke is a connection, connection to the top side. And flow lines are connected by manifold to three production train. Separation. Some some separation separation of oil and, and 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 water or mud. There is a main function of this uh, CPF. Industrial vessel to separate bulk liquid and TEG gas dehydration. Water is dehydrated. Water is separated out. TEG is a triethylene liquid. NEG is a monoethylene liquid. And gas. Export compression. After compression, they export the gas for 
will change the risk of compression, uh, size of uh, one third, discharge uh, capacity, and compression, and then export to FPSO. So it is a pre functional facility to FPS. So there is a first uh, preparation or separation or functioning treatment of gas to the uh, second level to FPS. Accommodation, there are probably up to 150 people can stay there. And then chemical injection package of MEG and FTG and hydrolyte. FPSO, we already covered this one time ago. Weather winning, current, current morning with covering coming now. Next slide. Three groups, seven morning legs. So you see that there is a, a 21 total and 12 pet scribbling. Scribbling is uh, running around. Storage of 1.2 million barrels of uh, gas. Okay. So that the uh, offloading shuttle tanker is coming when this uh, capacity is full. And then condensate treatment and stabilization is the main function. Series of three phase uh, separators, coalescers and heat exchanger stabilize condensate up to maintain uh, tank capacity, capacity and mercury, mercury removal. Flash gas compression, MEG again, and then water treatment, and finally export to the shuttle. Tank. So you can see the series of working together with the CPF and current. Current is something like this. One. So this is a flip line, the right. The others can be a morning lines. I don't know which one is it. Uh, mostly uh, gas or uh, oil is coming through the rider from deep sea. But the other lines are for the stabilizing the ship around the mooring. Function people. Okay. Also, turret is the function of the device at the front part of the ship so that the ship can rotate depending on the wave and current and wind. Otherwise, you need to more mooring lines. Keep. But this one should be also strong, was depending on the wind forces and wave force. But one problem of turret is that uh, you need to have a, a stable, uh, not rotating portion of the device because the pipeline is connected there. If the uh, device is ro rotating, the pipeline can be twisted. Yeah? Or this part should be stay there, or only the ship is can move. Then somehow, somehow the fluids coming through the pipeline riser and goes to the pipeline inside the ship. Even though there is a rotation, relative rotation. That is the main function of the body. So it is also very special and important device for that. FMC the company Techni also uh, uh, combined together. Now it was originally coming from Norway. Now it's yeah, into
So ROV is used, and you can see the umbilical or cable line of the ROV. And they are uh, remotely operating to connect devices between oil well and then other devices. Rolling down from the ship. And they are watching and controlling the mine, uh, small adjustments. One part is there and the other part is here. And so because Not, um, I think I find between uh, all this, Shaibek and many points. And also again, the impacts are uh, each project. And they have a big organization and CTF and FSO is only one portion of that. So that we may expect a big amount and organizational structure. And also again, the field architecture of each is, there is a CTF and FSO, the impacts project and also uh, engineering companies are uh, connected. Apache is another project uh, coming from uh, Vincent Black Oil Field. They also have a FSO, and they, they are doing a water and gas injection there. Injection means uh, uh, water should be injected into the uh, void when the gas and oil is uh, exported. And facility, there are 10 levels with two manifolds, one gas injection, two water injection wells, and dual pipelines and flexibilizers, and building blocks. So you need to see the reservoir should be the main focus, big and economical, big size of oil or gas. And hydrocarbon, oil or gas can be produced there. And service production options, there are different technolo technology can be used. Also, you need to have a health, safety, and environmental consideration. So for the investment, you need to have a final investment decision should be given in some uh, time during the uh, life cycle. And also, you need to have a planning for the development. So usually coming from an uh, oil mega project, there are more uh, ATs on this uh, Right, Pet petroleum fluid, uh, there is a natural gas composition. We, we already see that Pluto case project and Ichis project. Uh, there are more. So we, are, we see that 
The composition is 83% is LNG gas for Pluto, or 70% for itches. And there are also LPG gases, two different LPG gases. Some are more in the itches group. So we are, so you see that many coming from uh, their uh, LNG production. A hydrocarbon, oil or gas production processing coming from a uh, reservoir. You see that gas is uh, at the top and oil is in middle and water is heavy, so low down. So you need to uh, injecting water, then coming from this pressure, gas is kept coming up uh, rather than the pumping or vice uh, versa. And the, the distance is order is sometimes can be hundred kilometers. Um, and then production flow lines, chemical distribution, uh, coming with flow manifold and risers, risers here, and, and then FPSO can be working on this for the separation of water and mud, and separation and conditioning facilities. Uh, usually floating nowadays, but can be land-based if the reservoir is close by or platform-based. Platform means a fixed land. There's another uh, video. Cabling. flow of information. It is very expensive, and the loss of signal and data during transfer is a problem. Sending terabytes of data via space satellite could cost billions of dollars per lot. You may be surprised to know that 99% of international data is transmitted by cables at the bottom of the ocean, called submarine communications cables. The miles and miles of cables, which are roughly the size of a garden hose, carry internet traffic at the speed of light. They can carry so much traffic that fewer than 300 cable systems transport almost all internet traffic around the world. Laying and installing of cables in the oceans of our world is a fascinating business. Men and women toil long and tedious hours to make this possible. But how is this process accomplished? How are sea cables installed in the sea? Installing a submarine transmission cable is a costly and challenging activity. The lifetime of a submarine cable might be 25 of years, and the technical interventions for its repairing in case of faults are also costly and difficult. In the manufacturing process, the cables move through high-speed mills the size of jet engines, wrapping the wire in a copper casing that carries electricity across the line to keep the data moving. Depending on where the cable will be located, plastic, steel and tar are added later to help it withstand unpredictable ocean environments. When finished, the cables will end up the size of a thick garden hose. A conveyor that staff members call the cable highway carries cables directly to the port. Laying down the transmission cable on the seafloor is done by specialized vessels. They are all equipped with a turntable for at least 4,000 tons of cable and have the appropriate gear to handle it. Inside the ship, workers spool the cable into cavernous tanks. One person walks the cable swiftly in a circle, as if laying out a massive garden hose, while others lie down to hold it in place to ensure it doesn't snag or not. Even with teams working around the clock, it takes about four weeks before the ship is loaded up with enough cable to hit the open sea. The complexity of laying down the cable requires a coordinated work of many specialists in different fields. 
path selection is the first step, and it is done by power system engineers together with marine specialists. The survey is performed by geologists, geophysicists, and oceanographers. Once the path decided and cable is on board, starting from shore, the cable is laid out to the edge of the water. The cable laying ship gets as close to shore as possible without grounding and starts digging. Ships pull a type of plow that digs a trench and lays the cable at the same time. Sometimes, cables have to be picked up if run over another cable, or if the cable can't be buried. Well, 
Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Yes. I don't know how to go to the point. Yeah, I think. So today's lecture is about subsequent engineering, as you have seen. Um, so I put it a few advantages of uh, such engineering and why do we use uh, it? So uh, instead of uh, using um, surfaces platform, we can also uh, use uh, factories um, just above the sea floor. Uh, and it's uh, really useful because we do not need to uh, separate uh, oil, gas, water, and rocks at the surface, but uh, at uh, the seabed. So uh, we need uh, less risers and uh, it produces uh, less CO2. However, uh, we can also build the bigger factories just uh, on the seafloor. So it's more productive. So this is a quick figure of uh, how is uh, um, the sea. Uh, 
a system the planets uh, created. So you can with the uh, well just at the bottom of the support. Um, then we have a manifold entry. I will explain later what is it. Then we distribute uh, the oil and gas uh, where it wants. You can uh, separate it uh, on the support or on the surface other side. Then there are pipelines and reason to uh, read uh, the resources of the surface. So I will follow uh, this uh, machine uh, for my presentation for this lecture. Uh, so I will begin with the wells, and then I will talk about Christmas tree, the pipeline, the production drivers, and uh, the reception uh, at the surface. And I will finish with a uh, few types of fail. So uh, for the beginning, uh, the wells and uh, subsequent system. Uh, don't estimate, uh, underestimate the size because it can be uh, dozens of meters uh, long and very high. Um, so, first of all, we have to drill uh, the seafloor uh, to, <coughs> to make a uh, well where we are going to uh, take uh, the resources. There can be uh, at uh, one kilometer depth uh, in the ocean or more. Uh, the drill has to resist to high pressure and high temperatures, and uh, they are equipped uh, with uh, things such as uh, low adherences for uh, environmental concern. Uh, indeed, we do not want to uh, the resources to leak in the ocean, which can create uh, disasters for the environment, uh, for uh, reefs or uh, fishes, etc. Um, there is a short video of how uh, we drill, um, how we drill, uh, uh, wells in the ocean. 논리 청년하게 말을 했으면 좋겠다 싶은 분이면 바로 이 수업을 들으셔야 돼요. Consists in uh, creating uh, many holes and uh, introducing pipes in the ground, and uh, you uh, create holes smaller and smaller, but uh, way deeper every time, for uh, avoiding the structure to uh, uh, to be destructed because of uh, environmental conditions. So this is the second uh, well, but uh, we are creating uh, the third and the fourth one after this. Uh, the depths can be uh, from uh, three kilometers to uh, dozens uh, and 100 kilometers in the depth of uh, the sea. And then the drill is used uh, one more time at the end for um, reaching the gas in the oil reserve. Um, so, see, uh, well head are uh, the things at the top we put on the top um, on uh, the well. They are used uh, Cementing is a crucial part of the wellbore construction process. A properly designed uh, They are used to uh, be the base of the structure for uh, well and to uh, spread uh, oil and gas. Um, they contain many security layers uh, in order to avoid the uh, leaks of uh, anything. And they can uh, be very adaptable because we have to plug uh, in trees or pipeline uh, users to that. So, uh, when the well is uh, finished and uh, when we uh, 
have uh, the water on top of it. We can add a Christmas tree, uh, which is an assembly of valve and spruce, and uh, it permits it leads to uh, distribute uh, what we want uh, to the, all the structures on the seabed. And uh, it provides uh, the pressure control about, uh, sorry, for uh, the oil and gas uh, to uh, go up to the seabed. And this is uh, different types of uh, substitutes. And the short video, if you want uh, to do more about it, but uh, I'm not going to show it. Um, then uh, the substitutes are linked to uh, manifolds and uh, plants uh, sometimes if uh, the oil and gas are not separated uh, at the surface they can be uh, at the, uh, the seabed. So the manifold uh, is an arrangement of uh, piping uh, and the seabed and it um, Contribute to uh, the distribution of uh, the resources. Uh, then we have the pipeline, uh, which uh, Mr. Hans uh, talked about how they are installed. They are also called as a flow line, flow lines, and uh, they are linked uh, from the wellhead to the resource uh, to uh, um, move the resources horizontally uh, in the seabed. Before they are brought, bring, uh, brought sorry, uh, to the surface. So, uh, pipelines are, as I said, it's uh, transport liquid or gases. Uh, they are located underground uh, or just at the surface of the seabed and uh, also have a strict um, safety uh, measure to avoid leak. Uh, for the pipeline installation, we create uh, trenches. Uh, then we put uh, the pipeline uh, in it, and uh, at the end, uh, we backfill the uh, trench if uh, they are uh, in the ground. And uh, don't forget to test and inspect uh, every pipeline and uh, do maintenance uh, regularly in order to avoid uh, any septic event. So, after all this, we have the production results. Uh, which are pedals, but uh, which are used to uh, bring oil and gas to the surface uh, from uh, the bottom of the sea. There are different types of uh, users uh, depending on uh, what you want to do in the depth of uh, of the depth of, of the sea or, or the pressure or the temperature used uh, and uh, of what type of processes you use. Uh, there are different. Uh, Configuration uh, that you can use for the users. They are all them. The yellow parts are uh, buoyancy. Uh, indeed, uh, they are used for the rotation of uh, the resource. They are really used uh, because um, they can um, uh, help the resource to uh, reduce the pressure on the cables and uh, improve their lifetime. They are also used uh, to um, regulate uh, the disposition of the cable in the ocean if you want them to be at a certain level. They are made of uh, two half shells uh, which are around the cable and uh, that's uh, very basic uh, engineering uh, for them to be placed. Uh, the last part is uh, hydrocarbons uh, reception at the surface with CPF and PSO. That's uh, this is not talked about. It's talked about. So I'm not going to talk about this. But uh, here we can uh, just receive uh, oil and gas or uh, treat them uh, if we didn't do it uh, at the at the sea floor and also for the separation. Uh, this is the final view uh, of uh, how is it uh, at, the, uh, at the seabed with uh, trees uh, and wells, the manifolds, which fit uh, the resources, then uh, pipeline grazers and the facility at the surface. Um, there are uh, 
quite a uh, few uh, engineering uh, structures which are used for uh, gas compression uh, or oil compression uh, at the bottom of the sea. And uh, this is one example with uh, this project, uh, which uh, permits at least to, uh, um, to be more productive uh, than uh, <laughs> kilometers off the coast of mid-Norway, Statoil has made a quantum leap for value creation and resource utilization on the Norwegian continental shelf. The project started as a mere dream three decades ago, but after years of innovation and development with our suppliers and partners, Statoil has now fulfilled this dream. 300 meters below the surface, the world's first subsea gas compressor facility has reached its destination. The pioneering installation, covering an area the size of a football field, could fetch an additional 282 million barrels of oil equivalents from the reservoirs under the seabed. In energy terms, this equals four times the yearly hydroelectric power production in Norway, or enough energy to power all households in the United Kingdom for almost a year. Compared to a compressor on a platform, Oskard subsea compression substantially reduces CO2 emissions and is far more energy efficient. Let's have a look at how it works. As gas is taken out of the reservoir two and a half thousand meters below the seabed, the pressure decreases and the flow crawls to a halt. The compressor is then installed to actively suck out more gas and condensate from the geological formations. First, the compressor cools the incoming components and separates fluids from gases. The gases are then compressed, cooled once more, and mixed back with the fluids before being pushed to the receiving facility at Osgard B. To avoid fluid blockage in the pipeline, the compressor maintains required flow at all times. The key to the subsea compressor's efficiency is its proximity to the wells, allowing both sucking from the reservoir and pushing through the pipeline. The subsea gas compressor on Osgard is also vital to the next step for subsea processing, the complete subsea factory. Constructing self-contained seabed installations will increase safety and efficiency and grant us access to fields that have been unreachable in the past, an important step for our future value creation. So, um, this factory uh, is used since uh, 2015 and uh, is more effective uh, and efficient sorry, than, uh, than before. There are less impact in the environment and uh, it was really related. So that's why it, uh, uh, it's the beginning of uh, new uh, engineering for the subsequent since a few years. Uh, and I'm going to finish with uh, subsea failures. There are two types of failures, which are physical instabilities and corrosion. They are the main one. Physical instabilities depends on uh, the environment uh, in the sea. So there are uh, a few examples like uh, landslide, uh, which are uh, the seabed which, which is moving, so it can uh, be really difficult for the maintenance people to uh, um, uh, have effective uh, pipelines if uh, there are problems. Uh, the electron currents uh, and the weather in the ocean is also uh, dangerous for um, all the infrastructures. And finally, uh, we have also um, to care about uh, anchor and fishing gear uh, at the bottom of the ocean. For the corrosion, um, it's uh, forming uh, because of salt and uh, electrochemical uh, interaction, and it's leading to uh, a less effective uh, steel. So uh, it can break uh, more easily, and um, 
it's not uh, something that we want uh, in this uh, engineering field. So because of uh, the fact that uh, it keeps uh, happen underwater, we have to care about uh, the corrosion uh, very uh, These are uh, some consequences of corrosion with uh, pipe and burst, which explodes in the water and leak uh, and spills uh, the resources. And uh, this is uh, a little solution which is used uh, for against corrosion, uh, which is uh, epoxy coating. The epoxy is uh, spread on the uh, on the pipelines and on the surfaces which are uh, corroded, and uh, it leads to uh, avoid and stop uh, the corrosion for uh, future years. So there's a video of uh, a company explaining their solution, which is the proxy coaching, but I don't know if I have time. So if you want to watch it, you can do uh, the PowerPoint and I'm going to put the communication in three minutes. Thank you. Can continue the discussion session. Hi, my name is Shun Kim. Uh, today's select discussion is still there. Uh, the first session, today's discussion, I'm sorry that I'm not bad speaking and in English. So I would appreciate it if you could speak slowly. Uh, the first topic is of short building. Uh, what is of short building? On uh, uh, First of all, there are two simple types of building. First is onshore. Onshore is immobile buildings that reach around sweet feet into the ground. Most of the crude oil production in the world comes from onshore building. Second is offshore. These leak in the water deep wells that can last for up to a couple of days. Pipe storage should be free. When paying for offshore drilling, by transporting demand is more difficult. To avoid working away, the leak must anchor themselves to a problem. Uh, question one is what are the advantages and disadvantages of offshore drilling? Just to read the Technologies, uh, issues, and challenges that you have to face to go uh, deep into the field. Why? Ah. Okay. Very good. Uh, Why? <laughs> yeah. Next is what is augmented cases. I think you cannot really decide where the oil is, so if there's a lot of oil, you can make money. Right. Um, that is the, uh, I prepared the materials and I'll organize them like this. First is possibly and potentially dangerous. Second is the very similar winter images. Our package is first to increase oil production. Second is encourage economic growth. Second topic is challenges of subsea processing. Uh, what is the challenges of subsea processing? Is 
Many subsidy processing units have been designed, installed, and used worldwide until now. However, some subsidy processing remains a new technology in which it is prepared to demonstrate the reliability of the system and its component units. Subsidy processing units may be very popular. For example, subsidy separator may weigh up to 1,000 tons each, hence increasing the cost and reliability due to a oversizing and complex installation. Question two is what are the challenges of subsea processing? Any answer is okay. Yeah, high and higher pressure of the record. Yeah, right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. There are maintenance in case of issue of letting some to go there and to fix them. Yeah. Another exit. For a little bit of time. She says, I will be staying. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I organized the answers. Uh, first is competition near the bar has poor solvability for maintenance and repair. Third is components to stand on the seabed. First, additional facility to power. Two is high external pressure and low ambient temperature. Last is materials must cope with harsh subsea environments. That means corrosion. Last topic is lead pipe. Lead pipe has three kinds of the component. The first is jack up lids, often used for shallow well, tending on three legs secure to the ocean floor. The, uh, the oil bottom can travel up and down the legs as water level. Second is semi submersible bottoms. Dynamic positions to stem or anchor to stay in place during drilling. This main point is clean. Third is real chips. Faster alternative to semi submersible can operate in remote new locations with fewer supply pitch required. Last and the main point is less stable. Question three is best the real time. This is um, probably should answer. <laughs> yeah, right. This answer is this. Um, first is real ship, the contents and so on. So, third is check out this. Thank you for this question. <laughs> Okay. 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 Okay.